Alright, so this is the, uh, the introductory tutorial for Revit 2016. Um, I've downloaded the student version. It's available for anyone with a .edu email address um, and launched it up here. Uh, you can see that my project launcher is the first thing that opens when I open Revit. And here I can get to recently done or recently worked on projects. And I can also open recent families. As we go through these tutorials, we'll be kind of explaining what families are, but we're not going to touch on that right now. So what I'm going to do is just go to New under Project, and I select a project template. Here I'm going to select an architectural template and say OK. Revit's something that comes with everything kind of by default. So we have templates and styles for almost everything. Um, and all of these things can be edited in some way to change the way they look or act. So let's say this is an elevation tag right now that I'm currently in level one. We're looking at an elevation tag. I could edit that so that that tag looks like a circle or has a filled in uh, pointer. Right now, I'm just going to run through quickly kind of the, the, the layout of Revit for those that are completely unfamiliar. And what we have here is a, a project browser. So these are your views and ultimately your sheets. So here I have my floor plans, ceiling plans, and elevations. Later, as I create sections, details, drafting views, callouts, all of those would be under the views. If I move further down, I would have sheets. And if I right now right click, I could create a new sheet. Um, and I could pick what size sheet I want to work with. Say OK. And then it will pull up a new document. I've got a title block, and I can actually come in and change the sheet number. So let's call this uh, CS1, cover sheet 1. If I close this, you can see under my sheets, I now have CS1, that new sheet. Those in that sheet, I would drag and drop my views. So this is the project browser. Here we have a, kind of a properties tab. I'll actually expand this a little bit. So right now I have nothing selected, so this is just the properties of the view. Um, I can control things like how far and how deep I see, where I'm, I'm clipping my view depth. Um, I can change color schemes. I can give this a title. Um, I can edit a little bit of the information here, actually, quite a bit of it. Up here is uh, kind of my create toolbar. So I have an architectural tab, many other tabs following, and here is where I'd be able to come in and make walls, windows, roofs, floors, ceilings, curtain wall systems, railings and stairs, uh, generate rooms, room tags, uh, create openings either for shafts or through uh, penetrations in walls. I create my grid systems. And over here, this is work planes. This is a way to organize where elements are getting created and where they live in the three-dimensional realm. If I move through this quickly, under structure, uh, I have an opportunity to create kind of structural elements, logically. Uh, beams, columns, floors, trusses. Uh, I can create kind of rebar plans. For the most part, in a professional setting, I rarely use these components. Uh, sometimes I'll put in beams or trusses. Um, that's pretty easy to do, and it's helpful to kind of figure out how the architectural um, wall systems will respond to those things. Um, but a lot of the time, I count on my structural engineer to supply me with a Revit model and import that Revit model into my Revit model. Under systems, this is something that very similarly I would require a mechanical, plumbing, or electrical engineer to supply me with a, a Revit model and import their model in so that I can see the mechanical equipment. This is something that I, I might use at one point to suggest a location for a duct and then send my file to an engineer and, and you know, collaborate with them to come up with a, a good solution that will work for both of us. Under insert, this is where we can pull different file types into Revit. So let's say if I have a different Revit model that I'll be referencing, maybe a structural model like I just talked about. I could actually link it in so that when that structural model is updated, it would update here in Revit. Uh, I can also link in CAD files, which is something that we'll be doing in the next tutorial. And I can import uh, instances, so instead of linking it and when the CAD file changed, I could actually import it and then it would be static. So it wouldn't matter if that CAD file got updated. Um, it's not truly linked, so I'd have to refresh it myself. Images um, and new loading up new families. The annotation tab uh, will come a little bit further down the line um, as we've developed the project and then begin documenting it. 
these are all my dimensions. Um, then I have uh, where a lot of you know d design development and construction documents are, are held actually right here on, under the detail components. Um, so these are filling in regions, basically hatching, drawing detail lines, and uh, using detail components. So here I've got just a detail component of a wide flange section. And if I zoom in here, you can see there's a uh, W section beam. But this isn't actually a beam. This is just an icon. So this is just a flat graphic representation of what the beam is. Um, use that a lot. Uh, revision clouds and creating groups and then bat insulation lines so I can drag out insulation. Let's cancel that. All right. I also have text, which ultimately becomes kind of my leader lines and notes. Um, if I don't want a leader line, I can just put in normal text. Uh, and then I have tags. So this is like if I wanted to tag windows or walls or particular elements within the model, um, I could tag those different elements. Further over here, I have symbols. And symbols, things are like center lines or equidistance. Uh, you can see that there were some examples when I hover over. Um, north arrows, scales, all those things are in symbols. The Analyze tab is something that initially will do a lot of, uh, let's see, this is all structural stuff, so something that I don't use very often. Um, space configuration and kind of, uh, let's see, here's some zones for HVAC. Um, later we have heating and cooling loads, collision detections for the ducts, uh, annotation or colors for the duct supply and return. And then there's energy simulations. And new in 2016, uh, from what I'm hearing, is that the energy simulations have been really revamped and, and, and very beneficial. So that's something we'll get in as the project develops. Under massing and site, this is something we'll use very shortly. Um, massing is something that I can create very generic three-dimensional masses that I'll be able to work on in the future. Um, it's something that kind of come up with a quick sketch idea of the way the building might be and then we can actually use that information to generate what the approximate square footage of the building would would be when it's fully flushed out. Uh, we'll be using the site tools in the next tutorial to create a topo surface and start to divide up that surface so that we have um, property lines, uh, subregions, uh, and, and, and labeling this site so that we can work with an existing ground plane. Collaborate is when uh, in an office you're working on a Revit file with multiple users working on the same project. And I can create a series of work sets so that my colleagues and I can take and check out a particular element of the Revit model and uh, continue to work on it. I also have an ability to sync to a central file. So when I work with multiple people, I create a copy for myself. Uh, there's a copy for my colleague, and there's a central model that lives uh, at a shared location. Uh, synchronizing it means the changes I've made get pushed to the central model, and then the next time my colleague uses the model, they would have the latest and greatest changes that I've made. We have some backup stuff, which we'll cover on in case there's ever an accident and you need to go back to a previous version. Under Views, we have uh, view templates and styles. Um, so this is just a way for me to control visibility graphics, say turning off furniture, turning on furniture, turning off tile, turning off hatch lines. Um, all of that stuff is handled here. We have an opportunity to render within Revit, um, and we'll get to that in a later tutorial. Uh, here is where I create new views, new sections, new elevations, interior, exterior, drafting views, legends, and schedules. All of that would be created here. I have an opportunity to create sheets in this toolbar and then uh, the way you can control the windows and so switching windows or cascading all of the windows of the drawings you have open. Under manage, some of this is kind of the under the hood stuff of Revit. Um, under additional settings here you can see I can control line weights and line styles, the way my elevation tags and my callout tags look. I can actually use shared parameters, and this is a, in a future tutorial we'll be looking at parametric families and how using shared parameters we can move information from one family to the next. Uh, we can set up project information and project parameters here. We can also set up a location for the project, you know, where is north, what's latitude and longitude, how would the sun respond to the project, we would do that there. Managing some links and phases. Uh, and design options. Design options is an important one, it's an opportunity to, you know, create just a segment of the building uh, and have multiple iterations of that. So we can create a new design option and then sub-options within it 
and when one is finally decided upon by the client or whoever, you can accept it and those other options go away. Under Modify, uh, if I had an element selected, this toolbar would allow me to make changes to it, be it trim it, extend it, rotate it, copy it. Um, we can do arrays, um, and then I can group things and ungroup things here in the Modify tab. So with that, um, that kind of covers the overview of all the tools. In the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at uh, sites and massings. We're going to create a topo surface, put in some property lines, and draw some detail lines that give us setbacks, um, and frame where our buildable region is. So I'll see you in the next tutorial.